Okay. So uh, today we are moving on. I mean, uh, Nadav gave you an, uh, a kind of a preview saying, you know, biology is big, biology is huge. Uh, your computer is worth, worthless. It won't accept all the memory. So now I'll give you an example why it didn't lie, actually. So today uh, I'm talking, uh, I'll try to cover a very important topic, uh, which is uh, based on Uniprot, UniKB, which is knowledge-based. Uniprot, KB means knowledge-based, and Swissprot. And then I'll just mention Interpro and few specific features and cross-references, uh, although uh, in some uh, future talks we'll kind of uh, engage in at least in Interpro and in, in, in other subtopics. So just to give, uh, to, to put everybody on uh, their biological uh, thinking for a minute rather than computational thinking, just for, uh, to remind that's the reason we are here. Let's say you have uh, just cloned a gene or you just finish some uh, uh, large set of experiment and you have not one gene but 100 of genes that you are interested in. So obviously you want to know initially, is it already known? I'm just saying it in a very broad sense. Is it in some uh, database? And if so, what's the accession? What's the annotation? What can I say about it? And then is there any similar sequence? Why is that? Because it could be that your proteins is, come, is a, let's say, on guinea pig, but you are very interested in this one, and there is a beautiful data on other rodent, let's say rat or whatever. So you, you want to know this, and again, immediately, you would like to know what's the percentage of identity. Is it a family member? Did I just hand up? you know, being with something that is already pre-processed and you understand uh, uh, a lot of, of things about it. And then, of course, if so, if there is a homologue or uh, some identity, is it really in a specific region of this gene or is it throughout? Is it just a specific domain or is it uh, just a general, not that great, it's all 60% identity but throughout or is it like a patch? that is super uh, identical. I mean, those makes a huge difference in terms of the biology that you are going to research or the biology that you are going to infer from this, let's say, sequence that you just get. I'm talking about one sequence, but uh, the analogy is it can be expanded to hundreds of those or thousands. And then, of course, the evolutionary relation. What's the phylogenetic tree? Where it sits in the evolution tree? And this is, of course, all those are related in some sense, but they are not identical. And, uh, and then you would like to know, assuming this is a coding genes and the, a gene, and that uh, uh, the topic of this uh, uh, class, what is the protein characterization? Where in the cell it's localized? Now, those are very naive questions because it can be localized to three different region of the cell. So it, it's not, don't confuse between saying that it's a one class that fits all, but it's an annotation that can lead you to some biological knowledge. So is it a soluble? What's the 3D fold structure of this protein? Other information, for example, you would like to know if on aging, for example, this protein is up or down. Right? It's very important because you try to get from this to the understanding of this gene or protein within a context. And all those questions are, of course, very relevant. And I would like to show you that Uniprot can answer most of them in almost in a click. And that's uh, what makes the Uniprot extremely, extremely important. Okay. Now, uh, uh, I already, just to connect to what we already uh, dealt with the uh, last uh, few uh, weeks, we already discussed the gene bank and the Japanese resource. And here I listed some specific type of organism specific resources. We didn't talk much about them, but just to remind me and you that if you are interested in a specific organism, often it's a good idea to go to the expert 
system of this organism. But this is just a comment because this and this covers everything that we'll see here. Okay, so this is just a, a and we discussed quite in length the power of browser in which browsers, the UCSC and other, in which you can really navigate quite nicely in a more in a genomic view rather than content or protein view. Okay, so uh, uh, proteins are very different from just a gene because proteins are not only their translation sequence. And that's, I know that it's almost trivial because you learned it in first year of your study, but I think it's worth to uh, uh, put uh, this loud and clear because what we have in protein, which we do not have in most cases in DNA, is a list of function or subfunction or annotation that actually de define almost the properties of this gene. So for example, PTM, post-translation modification, it's not written in the sequence per se, but of course, as you all know, a kinase that is a dead kinase, it's a very different story if it's a, a kinase that can do the job or a protein that has a phosphorylation site or glycosylation site, its lifetime, its location, its position is completely different. So those are as important as the sequence in many aspects. So PTM, the processing, namely a protein that as a real entity in the cell, it's working only after it's cut its, I don't know, 25 first amino acids, where it's written. You cannot get it just by doing alignment, sequence, and so on. I mean, everything that we talked till now. So you need an expert system that will you'll tell you all those, uh, a, a, let's say, annotation, localization, targeting, function, structure, protein-protein interaction, and many, many more. So the, the, uh, many of those info, uh, of this type of information doesn't come from the machines that we talked about so much, like the NGS and everything that we discussed. They don't, do not come from that. It's zero information from that. Actually, there is another magic machine that we talk very little about, which is called mass spectrometry, which is based specifically to work on proteins, peptide, metabolomes, and so on, because these machines can do only something very stupid. They can tell us what's the mass of a peptide. And if this peptide has a phosphate or does not have a phosphate, it has two different masses, right? And this will tell us, yes, this peptide, let's say, it's heavier than its original one that comes directly from the genome by such and such, and such and such is exactly, not like, not, you know, it's exactly one phosphate, okay? So, so all those machines are hidden under the carpet, but they are the ones that provide us this type of information. So this is something that I don't know how many are, of you are, are aware that those annotations are not coming only from, you know, like a, 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 the, 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 the idea of the curators, but are supported by quite a lot of uh, biological information. So back to uh, our protein uh, system, we have two or more than two resources for proteins. One that we'll talk about and I'll illustrate is the Swiss Sprout. The Swiss Sprout is, as of now, still the highest annotation resource. So if you can work with a protein or gene that has a Swiss Sprout uh, entity, it's better than any other. So this is just a rule of a thumb. The Swiss Sprout, because, basically, because it's a curated. Somebody, like a person, went through and uh, checked all those annotations, approved them. This is a very uh, uh, courageous uh, task of going over the proteins, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some hints about this. Now, the, the other one uh, that basically, it's called PEER, but PEER is gone by now, so UniProt is a combination of a little bit of history of SwissProt combined with PEER, and now we call it a, a UniProt, and Tremble, which is another very important, uh, a resource, now we'll talk about Swiss Protein Tremble. Tremble 
is the translated emblem, we, we mentioned it last week, which include everything that is not yet in Swiss prot. So a protein cannot have both. That's an important uh, comment. It's either there or there, okay? So protein are shuffling from, either they throw because, thrown to the garbage because they are wrong, or they move into Swiss prot, but very slowly, as you'll see. And then we discussed a, a, a gene pep, which I'm not crazy about it, but it's, it's okay. It's a resource and a, a beautiful, uh, uh, important resource, which is called PDB, which is only based on experimentally validated shown structure. Structure means X-ray, NMR, uh, cryo-EM, and so on and so forth. So again, as I said on Swiss prot, if you have Swiss prot, go there. If you have PDB, it's even better. Okay, so this is, there is this internal list of quality, but quality is not because the sequence is wrong, but the amount of information, biological information that one can get is really not identical if the protein just came from Tremble by automatic methods, curated, or actually a, a studied in a structural-based uh, elements. Okay. So just uh, to wrap up uh, this uh, very important, uh, I think, um, partition of what, when we say the protein word or, or the protein space, what exactly do we mean? So the Uniprot KB, and on purpose I'm mentioning it as a KB, it's built of two sections that I'll tell you in a minute, but it's a high quality database, highly recommended, it's a non-redundant a non protein database with maximal coverage that include a lot of the issues that we kind of touched upon, such as splice isoform, disease variant, and PTM. And uh, uh, it's all connected to its sequence, as we mentioned, from gene bank and so on. The other thing that is very important, it comes with a stable identifier. When I say steady ident identifier, which is uh, uh, this name that I'll show you in a minute, will stay forever, even that the sequence may change, right? So you are not losing your index point. So there is a history for each and every protein showing what was changed over the years, and you can actually follow if, if you want to know what ha have happened, but the name, the section, uh, Accession number will be stable, and that's very important. And again, a lot of this have been developed into a consistent nomenclature and control vocabularies. So saying something about a protein comes with, from a dictionary, a very large one, but it's not just a free text. So you can really use a lot of computational power in order to uh, analyze those and infer. The last point that I want to mention is that there is a, th a, a, a thorough protein annotation list, which is again, it's an ongoing mo a, a, a effort, which is extremely good, I must say. But uh, protein function, of course, is a very fuzzy term. What's a protein function? I mean, maybe when we are talking about an enzyme, we can understand what's the catalytical aspect of, the, of it. But as I think all of you know, most protein, will have their function, depends on the context, on the protein interaction, on the cell type, on the type of splicing, and so on. So to, to say the function is not as good, and I'll show you at least one uh, cross-reference that try to deal with this moonlighting uh, aspect in which one protein can do 20 things. Okay, so that, that's very important because we tend to uh, minimize the function complexity just by saying, okay, this is this, this is this, but it's definitely, by now, I think you we can do much better. Okay, um, I'll, I'll skip this, and I'll just uh, remind that it's not another story, it's an extension to the story that we already discussed, because everything here we discussed. So this is the source. Everything here we discussed, and everything here we discussed. So it's an extension, and again, it's written, who is taking it from where, but the most important point from our discussion, that it's all coordinated. So RefSec will not show us 
a, referent, a, 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 a sequence that will contradict with its annotation from uniprot and vice versa. So it's very well coordinated, which was not the case 10 years ago, but now through Elixir and other major effort of uh, standardization, it became even rather easy to jump from one to another. Uh, although, again, if you are into the business of protein, use uniprot. If you are in the business of genome, as I said, use maybe the browser and so on. Okay, last thing is that uh, um, th there is a policy here, which is a decision. And the decision was done by uh, the head of uh, Swiss Broad, who is called uh, Amos Bayroch. And Amos is, reminds us, uh, yeah, yeah, I think he was born in Ramat Gan, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but grew up uh, not, not in Israel. But the policy that was set about 20 years ago is the following, that only one gene in a given species, say a species like human or whatever, will have a single entry. So what, how can you deal with the 10 or 20 alternative splicing? They are all variant of the same entry, okay? So you are not just expand the number of entity, but you leave a gene as a gene and the variant one per gene uh, uh, lo locus, okay? So this is a decision. So you can still see all the variants and we'll show an example or a few examples for this, but this is a decision. And then how do you decide who is the one that we would like to talk about? A little bit like RefSec, you have to make some kind of rules that are mostly okay, sometimes they are terrible, but this is a uh, uh, reality. So the rules are really the one that is most prevalent, that is most, uh, most similar to orthologs, namely to other organisms. So it's really a core of something that is orthologous uh, sequence to other species. Also, it has to have not the shortest one, but the longest, but with the most knowledge and they do some, which is kind of nice, some amino acids composition a, a, a scoring to make sure that uh, if it's wrong, so, so you are not uh, falling into wrong amino acids composition, never mind. And if you do not have any of those, just go for the longest. So there is some rules to this. And this uh, is Uniprot. And Uniprot, as I mentioned, uh, has another two uh, uh, elements. I'll illustrate it, but before the illustration, that the Uniprot KB divided to two sections, the Swiss prot that I already mentioned, and the tremble. And in the term of the Uniprot, it's called reviewed and unreviewed. So it's equivalent. If you see this uh, star, it means reviewed, and this means unreviewed. So this is uh, equivalent to this and this. Uniref, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example what it is, but in a, mo in a moment. But Unipark, don't dare to go there, my suggestion. It's, the, uh, uh, it's like the, the warehouse of any sequence, any metagenome, any, uh, uh, anything that was sequenced ever goes to Unipark. And it's just an enormous, very redundant, very broken, un uh, so don't, don't go there, no need. This is a very useful, I'll show you in a minute, and this is very useful. So you have really good uh, and a lot of support. Okay, as I said, uh, uh, it's, uh, this is the two section that it's exclusive, this join. One, once a protein is here, it cannot be there. Okay, so as I said, one entry per protein and all of these are associated with the Uniprot KB. Just very briefly, ontology, features that I'll show you what I mean, splicing, sequence, annotation, nomenclature, references, and so on. So uh, just numbers, statistics. It's really grew like, as, you, as, as a lot of biological data just grew up. You can see what happened to Swissprot. Here, Amos Bayroch couldn't handle it anymore. So you start uh, to see that uh, it's slowing down. But uh, I want to show you something. This is the Swiss port amount versus this. So you see the scale. 
of what can be done in Swissport, right? Okay. Now, this is, I always like to show it. In 2015, they had this great idea, say, we cannot handle these numbers anymore. Let's say that any two viruses that are similar or the, the, uh, any two, let's say, E. coli that are similar enough, let's compress them to one representative, and that's it. So they were very happy to move from 90 million to 50 million, but it took another year and forget about it. I mean, un, I mean the, the monster came back. I mean, it, there is no way. So you have to do it differently. You have to, to, to find tools and uh, method in order to, uh, uh, to deal with it. Now, just a, a matter of uh, something that might surprise you. If you go to all this database and you ask, what is the organism that has the most proteins, you'll find quite surprisingly that the one that has like one million proteins, it's this organism, HIV. Now the, 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 the HIV that causes AIDS, AIDS, because everyone is, they change one nucleotide is a different, let's say HIV, a different species. But you see that, and then you'll get to a, lo a long list that most of the names you never heard of, and it's okay that you never heard of, but a lot of bacteria, bacillus, half a million, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, you don't see even human here, right? Because it's not that important in this uh, aspect. And indeed, when you look at the statistics, this is a, a two years ago, a year ago, you see that it's mostly bacteria, small amount of archaea, viruses that are taking 3%, and uh, uh, you can see that eukaryotes are about a quarter. And if you zoom in into uh, eukaryotes, even that, you see that fungi, single cell fungi, takes 40% uh, of them. So we are, human is here. It's li like nothing, OK? And other mammals are 8% and so on of this part, of this eukaryotes part. So you see that it's very biased. And, um, I'll just uh, go, go on and uh, just to say that uh, uh, there are, again, this is the last uh, things before the illustration. Uh, there are, when you see a sequence, it comes with five tags. And the tags are written here, whether it has a protein level evidence, namely somebody somehow saw it as a protein. And when I say a protein, doesn't mean that with the microscope you saw it, means but by direct method, such as Edmund degradation uh, se uh, sequencing, mass spectrometry, X-ray, NMR, or antibody, it was detected. So the pr protein is there. This is number one, and it's the highest evidence level. Number two is evidence by the transcript. No one really saw the protein, but the RNA that produced these proteins has been shown mostly by RNA-seq, Affymetrix, you name it, okay? So this is number two. Number three, which is the majority of the protein, never seen, not by RNA, not by protein, not by antibody, not by mass spec, not by N NGS, by nothing, but only by inference from homologs. This is the largest part. I don't know if you can imagine how important are those tools to infer from homo homology and then predicted and uncertain. Okay, so uh, uh, let's say, and that's what I'll do, let's say I have a FASTA file that you just learned how it looked like, or let's say I have somehow a name like kinase uh, of the mitochondria, something very fuzzy, let's say, or I have a list, or I have a dream, whatever. Okay, so let's go. So uh, just uh, uh, just uh, so we start. Okay. Okay. So this is Unipro. This is the entry point, and I, I want to uh, make sure that we are okay with a few things that uh, to illustrate. So the first thing is, as you can see, this is Uniprot KB that I already showed you. If I'm uh, uh, hitting here, you'll see 
that I have a lot of supporting data that I won't talk now about. I won't talk about the protein or the, the proteome. The UniPark, I said, don't touch. The help is very good and the UniRef. UniRef is a very a clever way in which uh, uh, all the sequences are clustered and they are clustered by three level. All proteins that are 100% clustered will be in one uni, UniRef 100, okay? UniRef 100 means 100% identical. So why, why, why do we have two proteins that are 100% that are identical? We just say that we want to have a representative, non-redundant, so how come? Any idea? Sorry? Yeah, exactly. Same histone in hundreds of species are identical in terms of, so all of them are in Uniport 100. The other section of the classification is, uh, is UNIREF 90, which is very useful. Why it's so useful? Because it leads to 90% and more. So it's a clustering in which you can allow a little bit of differences, but immediately it reduced the, the size of the scale uh, quite dramatically, and I'll show you an example. So, uh, 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 when, so this is just when you go from here. And I want to show you the numbers. We are talking about, can, can you see it uh, good enough? Uh, is it, is it, can you see it now? Is it okay? Okay, so the Swiss prot is half a million, manually annotated, we discuss. The tremble is 182 million sequences. So you see the scale. This is like nothing, right? Uh, uh, the the, the UNIFREF I already mentioned, the proteum I'll skip. Very important point to look at are the taxonomy that I, I won't uh, talk uh, specifically about. Disease, I'm just showing you what's there sublocation and so on. So for example, just to show you, when I talk about diseases, immediately it tells you that there are 505, so this is the number of entry of diseases that it's already in this uh, general, uh, uh, general uh, um, as I said, uh, dictionary that we are talking about. Oops, sorry, I, I didn't plan to, to stop it. Ah, oh, oh, sorry, uh, it was, yeah, yeah, okay, we, we are good. Yeah, it's on the, the other size that uh, I'm using. Okay, so this is the numbers that we are talking about. And one, one thing that I want to show you is one uh, is here in the bottom, it's very useful to look at the statistics before I'll go to a specific example. The statistics is, uh, gives you a very nice summary of what is going on in your database that could be either Swiss prot or Tremble. So I'll just show it for a moment on the Swiss prot. What we see is what I already showed you. The number is half a million. Immediately it tells you how many new entry comes from last uh, uh, entry, which is less important, but as you can see, almost 10% uh, uh, were updated. So it's a very active field of, uh, and immediately you see what I already showed you, the level of bacteria and eukaryotes and so on in Swiss prot, immediately you see the length, average length of the uniprot uh, Swiss prot. Uh, by the way, it tells us what is the shortest protein, which is two amino acids, and what's the longest one, which is 35,000. Do you know which one is it is? This guy? The there is this uh, very, very uh, huge human protein called titan, which is uh, uh, a huge uh, cytoskeleton, which uh, is this uh, unbelievable uh, size. Most of the proteins will be on an average of 350 amino acids, let's say. But what's, uh, uh, you, you have a lot of statistics, but it, uh, I'm, I'm encouraging you to look at it because it tells you exactly 
what are the type of annotation that one can get, okay? So for example, you can have cofactor, how many? Or, or you can have a domain, how many? You have 50,000 uh, uh, domains within Swissport out of a dictionary of 43,000. So immediately you have the size of the dictionary, how big it is, and so on. And yeah, please. So for example, all proteins that you can have, they have the word, the annotation word domain. And now you know that there are 40,000 type of domains, but the word domain will appear and it's only out of these 40,000, nothing else. So th this is why I'm emphasize the dictionary. It means that you can do, reverse the question saying, how many protein do I have with this domain? and immediately you get there. So it's a back and forth kind of uh, 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 play. So as you can see, I'm putting it because it tells you quite a lot about the biology. Coil, coil, DNA binding, domain, motif, repeats, and so on, zinc finger. You have a lot of uh, annotation that are extremely important and very good. And uh, um, so let's, let's go directly to, uh, so this is the statistics. And the statistic also goes on how many, what's the fraction of the amino acids. It's a very elaborate statistics. So another thing that is more like fun, they have every week uh, the protein of the week, which is nice to read. And actually, it's, it's, it's beautiful. There is a book uh, that came from all those weeks. And it's a beautiful biology because there is somebody in Swissprot that sits and finds the most and she's very creative, this lady, and she comes with amazing, amazing stories. So if you kind of a protein lover like me, you read this as a, uh, you know, the song of the day, the, the poem of the day in uh, Aretz. So the same, the protein of the day, and they are very, very interesting stories and always a, a, a something that you will surprise you. So this is every week when you open Uniprot for working, take one minute to read the story of the week, which is kind of nice. And, uh, and uh, that, that's basically it. And uh, uh, let's go to a, a, to directly to Uniprot. And I encourage you to use the advanced uh, uh, setting. What's the advanced setting tell us? Let's say we would like first to go to, let's say just for, for this uh, illustration, to human, okay? So I'm saying, that will be an organism, and the organism will be Homo sapiens. Let's say, okay, Homo sapiens, yes. However, okay, so this is good, that's what we choose. Now it can tell you what else do you want to add, but please note, I won't use it, but please note that you can have quite a lot, for example, a, a, a annotation, I mean in this uh, advanced, uh, for example, you can go to the sequence and say, I want the sequence to be no more than, uh, let's say, I want the sequence to be no more than a specific size, between 10 and 100. I want to, uh, so you, you have a very detailed uh, uh, type of list, but let's say I don't know exactly what term I want to use, so I write uh, synapse, okay? So I said, okay, go for it. So now what, what the machine is doing, going through human, because that was the limitation, right? And now I'm going into the synapse. So immediately it tells me there are this number of reviewed, now you remember reviewed is Swiss prot, and this number unreviewed. I'm in human, right? So I'm going and it tells me that the synapse that I wrote without any a, a specific field, it's because subcellular location says that there are such and such synapse in this term and there is another term in go annotation and so on but now it provide me a list of everything in human in the word synapse without predefine what type of synapse so let's say i want to use synapse in term of this so immediately just okay so i have this sub list of 500, and again, I can go on and refine my list. One very important feature here, look at the list. You can do immediately four different things. 
or maybe I, I, I skipped it, I should start with this, but I'll come back to this. You have here an entry, and this is the type of entry that Uniprot is using. And as I said, accession that is unchangeable, this one, right? This is the name, and the name is there only because it's a Swiss port. If it wouldn't be Swiss port, it will duplicate this. The name will be the same as the entry, right? The, this, it will be either P or Q or O, that's it, and then five letters. So it's always P, one, two, three, four, five, that's it. This is the name, and the name is always with the underscore and the organism or abbre abbreviation of the organism. This is the protein name, this is the gene name, and let's say I want already to know more about it. So what I do, I click on this, have you seen this? I click on this, I click on this uh, 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 top of the list on this. And immediately it tells you, do you want me to present to you on this sublist whatever you like? And I said, yes, good idea. What, why not? Let's do it. So the default is entry and name and organism. And, but I would like also to know the length. I would like also to know the mass of the protein. I would like to know also the polymorphism, let's say. I would like to know DNA binding or active site, and so on and so forth. And look at this. I can decide that I want in this original list already to have interaction, protein interaction, expression, up and down, PTM, and so on. However, you can always go back and say too much. Do me the default, so it's save you from being too uh, uh, you know, too greedy, let's say. But why I'm mentioning it? Because first of all, it's a very, very detailed you can uh, uh, addition to the list. And once you do this, you do save. And now, and now when you save it, it will show you, and you can download this subset as a download subset either to your basket to keep it for you for working later or just as a download, as a, as a pure download, in any of the method of download that you learn, Excel, XML, CF, any, any of the list that you would like. You would like it as a FASTA, you would like it as a XML, you would like it any, any type of format that you kind of like it, you can have it, okay? So this is really phenomenal. So think about this level before even entry the protein as a critical level in which you can decide what focus do you want to do in your analysis. Got it? Th that's very important because once you have it right, you can now start to do a deeper a, a engagement with the protein itself, let's say, or set of proteins, right? Now, uh, uh, once we do this, Let's say just for, because I'm in the kind of almost the end, let's start by playing with this uh, protein that I kind of like. Uh, it's called the DLG4, but actually I knew it as a different name. So what you immediately see that there is, look at this. This is the, the, the most important part. You have here, uh, we can do it one by one. You can have it, this function that I told you, that function is not an easy term. You have name and taxonomy. You have subcellular. So let, let's start. I'll jump on the a, a, a function just because it's too complicated for the moment. And I'll start with the name. Very important. You have a recommended name, but you have quite a, a, a many alternative names, right? So PSD95, SAP90, they are all the same. So in the literature, mostly you'll find this. You have here exactly this name came from where? So they give you in this a, a version all the, you, there is no surprise. If they, this is the name, who gave me the name? Is it a name from the Drosophila? Is it a name from the mouse? Is it a name? So you have immediately this. I'll take another two minutes because I want to show you some uh, interesting stuff in the, in the uh, sense of, so this you kind of uh, understand. Immediately you have subcellular localization. And again, 
they tell you, do you want it with the Uniprot annotation? My recommendation, go for it. Although it's automatic, in my view, it's better than the other version, which is cellular annotation, that is trying to combine and to do a, a unification of annotation that usually it will show you everything because somebody says something about somebody. Uh, so, so, so you get a less, much less, um, I would say, accurate. And uh, so it's, it's a trade-off. I, I, I won't say to, to use this or that, but you can play with both. And that's very important. That's about uh, cell, subcellular. A, a pathology, is there any disease that is relevant? Let's directly go to the PTM that I mentioned in the beginning. So they have here the chain, as I said uh, before, chain is a name that says from position this to position this. If I click here, I'll see exactly where the position here, exactly in the FASTA format, as you just uh, learned. And immediately, it's ready for you to do a blast by default or by your own preference, right? And this is the entire chain that I used. Now, if I want to, 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 to say what's going on here, this is a phosphoserine. I'm clicking on this, or I'm clicking on the, this, on 73, and I'm getting, sorry, and I'm getting uh, the 73. This is a phosphoserine of, uh, 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 and it's marked exactly where it is. And I'm, again, ready to do any analysis on this specific a, a phosphoserine. So immediately you see all the, now those, they tell you if they saw it actually, or is it by similarity? So when you click on this by similarity, you immediately see that this is from the mouse. So if you are happy with this, go with it. If you are not happy with this, ignore it. So they, they tell you where this annotation came from. So specifically, they don't see it in the human version, but in the mouse version, exactly in this position and exactly in, and, but when I say see it, I mean see it for real, not predicted uh, story. So again, you have here expression, interaction. Interaction, they did something uh, quite uh, nice, which is, uh, by, by the way, they are not that great in terms of, um, I would say, graphic, sophisticated graphic, but they are excellent, excellent, excellent in terms of uh, combining the data into a compressed version in which you can see it without going into too much detail. So uh, really done very cleverly. So for example, in this scheme, what you see is all the proteins that were shown to be interacting with this guy that we are talking about and the, uh, uh, how the, the color is indicative to how many evidence we have for this. And you can see that mostly it's an empty you know, a list. So it's not that it's a very packed list, but there is at least uh, 20 or 15 proteins that were shown physically in IP, in protein interaction, in cross-linking, and so on, to interact directly with this protein. So immediately, you got quite a lot of uh, information. Uh, you have uh, the structure. Again, uh, we won't uh, talk much about it. The protein domain, that we have another class about domain, so I won't uh, elaborate much on this. And they have the sequence. This is the last thing that I promise you to show you that they have version of the sequence. So it's not one version. There are three versions to these specific proteins. And they tell you exactly which version are those, including the FASTA, or you can add it to the file, or you can do any, any showing exactly the, the protein. And you can do also what, it's, what I skipped in the beginning, do in the beginning of the list, you can do uh, a line. So if you want to show how those two versions different, just do a line. And you click this, this, and immediately align the two. And you see exactly where the differences are. So the align the uh, blast and the add to, fun uh, to basket are very important, including the history that I mentioned before. And actually, they, they, they tell you that this specific protein is very well annotated because it has this, 
high scoring in annotation level. So I think I'll stop here because uh, uh, you can see that, uh, as I said before, the only problem with the Uniprot, which is a phenomenal uh, resource, that once you get there, you cannot get out. And there is dinner, there are kids, there are all those issues. And uh, so, so it's really, you can really learn beautiful biology. One disclaimer that the function that I jumped, I didn't talk about jumping, is mostly biochemical and less system based. There are other resources if you want something that is less biochemical oriented. But this is uh, like a small disclaimer, okay? And uh, I think I'll stop here.